And we are joined by Tony Burns, Poker Tournament Director at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Now, Tony, we were just both talking before you got on the show about how much we love that fancy property and how silly everyone is for going to Las Vegas because Florida's a little bit of a better destination, IMO. I'm just saying. Agreed. <laughs> You <laughs> look, you got it. Well, I, I of course want to get into a lot about what's going on at the Seminole Hard Rock. I think this has really become a big, uh, big poker destination. It's become a real tournament stop, I think, for a lot of you know both the biggest name players and also people who want to play those low stakes, like myself. But before we, before we get too much into it, I wanted to talk a little bit about about you and your story. You've been nominated for awards. You've really built this. I think you've really built the room out in a way that's attracted a lot of people. So you clearly, you've got the, the skills, but let's talk about who's the man behind, you know, <laughs> who, who, where, where is Tony Burns really from? Like, you know, you were a kid growing up in Northern Ohio. No, close. Uh, the Midwest. I'm originally from Indiana. Yes. Uh, moved to South, I'm <laughs> close. Uh, moved to, uh, Titusville, which is right outside of Orlando Kennedy Space Center in 1988, so I was six years old. I uh, grew up there, uh, went to UCF for college. Uh, you can finish, contrary to popular belief. Uh, they always said, you know, it's under construction forever, you can't finish, but living proof, four years, you can get it done. I uh, graduated uh, 04 with a bachelor's degree in business, uh, got into poker on the side. Went, my dad took me to Vegas for my uh, 21st birthday. Oh, uh, good guy. Three. Yeah, well, thanks, Dad. Uh, so, <laughs> stayed at the Lady Luck Hotel in Old Downtown. He was very, very proud about spending twelve dollars and ninety-five cents a night and getting dollar ninety-nine steak and eggs. Uh, <laughs> went to Binion's uh, the year that MoneyMaker won the World Series. So was there when he won the World Series and uh, came back, came back home and said, "Guys, this everyday guy just won the World Series of poker." And we started playing five ten dollar tournaments around the kitchen table. Uh, the Sun Cruz Casino ran out of Port Canaveral. It was the only place to play like bigger buy in tournaments and things like that. So went from you know right around the kitchen table to playing out on the boat. Uh, my first ever live multi. I played a three hundred dollar multi and uh, picked up uh, like three grand. Finished third. Was to go to the two thousand four World Series. And uh, so I instantly became the you know the, the home game legend. Wow, that's so, so sick, so fast. Yeah, I mean, just full hook, you know, first molt, live multi, welcome. Wow. So. And then you're just never, now you're just trapped forever. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a friend of mine had a bar poker league, uh, which was popular, you know, early 2000s, uh, helped him out dealing. And uh, my regular nine to five, I was importing and exporting building products from Chile and China and Brazil. So... Yes, I know. A little bit of a para paradox. Uh. Yeah, like that's obscure. That's obscure. And the margins <laughs> in a lot of that now are, are, I think, really slim. So come into this world. Yeah, so dealing poker, I mean, I was dealing a couple nights of poker in the bars, you know, having a good time with people and making the same amount of money in a couple nights of dealing poker that I was, you know, my regular nine to five, you know, five days a week. So I said, I like this poker thing. So a friend of mine wanted to expand the business. Uh, went to uh, the west coast of Florida, down from Tampa, down to Naples, and we opened up. Uh, my apologies. Okay. Opened up. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, we're actually on the floor right now. Found a quieter corner. To, uh, so ended up uh, going down there for about a year. Uh, came back when the laws changed in Florida, 2007, uh, allowing uh, no limit buy-ins on land. So, but you could only buy in up to $100 in Florida. And that was 2007. So we were playing, the best game we had going was a 5-10 no limit with a $5 ante for a $100 buy-in. And it was <laughs> it was probably the crazier games out there. So, you know, everybody just blind all in, you know, guys running, you know, running it up, you know, as fast as they could. And, you know, guy get up to 1,000, 2,000. If you would felt, then, well, hit the reset button back to 100. So that went on for a couple of years until they opened up the buy-ins. And uh, that was about 2009. I uh, worked at the Isle Casino in Pompano. I was hired by Mike Smith, who's the uh, director of poker for Maryland Live. Uh, he left in 2012, 2013, about the time that I had uh, the birth of my first child. 
uh, went back to dealing. Uh, he hired me originally as a dealer, went to a dual rate, uh, you know, full-time supervising for him for you know a few years. And uh, tournaments were my niche, so I ran the nighttime tournaments. And uh, so Mike left, went up to Maryland, uh, worked a couple of years more at the aisle. Uh, 2015, uh, August joined the Hard Rock, the tournament director job opened up here. Uh, Bill Mason, who's the director of poker, uh, hired me, and uh, and here we are today. And the rest is history. And it's been like a, right. it's been a solid, solid few years since you've been there. I definitely think you've you've made cl- quite a splash. And in fact, you guys have a a big poker event. What is called the Poker Showdown? Poker Showdown is going on right now, starting on April the fifth. Uh, we open up with a five hundred seventy dollar buy in, million dollar guarantee. We actually end up with 3,030 entries, so we had a $1.5 million prize pool. Uh, four-way deal yesterday night uh, for uh, four players taking home, I think the minimum cash was $133,000. Uh, won by a local uh, local player, uh, Steve Bennett. Uh, 180, I want to say 186000 he won. So. That would be a... That would be a big deal for me. That would really be nice. <laughs> and, he's, and he's right back at it today. He's on the floor right now playing the 1100. We had a w, uh, WPT Deep Stacks event uh, with a quarter million dollar guarantee. We absorbed that event. Uh, the Hurricane Irma uh, back in September, uh, uh, we had to cancel the event over in our Immokalee property. And so we absorbed uh, that event and we hit the guarantee on the first day. And uh, Joe McKeon sent out a thing, called me a sandbagger. I said, no, it wasn't a sandbag, and it was, you know, it was just an absorbed event. So we had uh, 314 yesterday. Uh, I think when I walked over here, like 360 today. So just another another fantastic turnout and great start to the series. Man, that's so sick. So, well, we just got done talking about the uh, the controversy at the Westgate, and I, I don't want to put you in a weird spot. Of course, you don't have to be <laughs> – you don't have to say too much about, you know, your opinion if it puts you in a weird spot. I don't spot, like but- don't do controversy. Well, it's in in terms though of talking about these these guarantees. It really is a it's a tough spot for a tournament director for a casino for anywhere to be. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys ensure. I mean, you're reaching all your guarantees. So you know, what are you guys doing to make sure that you're not only reaching them but you're crushing them? Well, one of the things um, the Hard Rock um, has always done is they've always paid their guarantees. I think they have. The largest guarantee in poker history, uh, 2014. They had the $10 million event in August that overlaid $2.5 million, and they paid it. Uh, the, obviously, that was before I got here. Um, Bill Mason, who's the director of poker that I mentioned earlier, um, he has been the, the godfather of really the poker uh, tournaments and just growing South Florida poker. I, I give him, I mean, he, he deserves all the credit, really. I mean, he allows me to be me, be the face that interacts with the players. But Bill, um, who was actually nominated for Industry Person of the Year in 2016, um, he's just done an amazing job trial and error, you know, different times of years, getting all the tournaments set, uh, developing the partnerships, the you know, the logistics of, of what goes on here. And I, when I came aboard here, I really stepped into gold and was handed the keys to a Ferrari and was like, hey, don't you know, don't wreck it. <laughs> so and modest to boot. It's, it, once again, the credit goes, to, it has to go to him, you know, and without uh, him allowing me to be me, I mean, the joke is I'm the face that runs the place, <laughs> but it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, uh, Mr. Larry Frank, who's the general manager of poker operations, all the way to the top, you know, they, they, they love poker here. Um, and, and, you know, it's uh, not many places that are investing into poker right now. Uh, you know, I know we'll talk a little bit later very briefly on what I can talk about, but, you know, when you drive on property now, you see a, you know, an amazing expansion project going on with the new hotel and casino, and it's it's uh, it's exciting times here. Well, you guys have been really a, a hot topic at the American Poker Awards, I would say, for the last couple of years. Now, I unfortunately was sick and did not get to attend this year. Yeah, it was one of your here. Yeah, there, where was that saucy little minx running around with all that open bar <laughs> <laughs> this time? I don't know, but. Uh, let's talk a little bit about about what went down for you guys at this year's awards. So uh, the property itself, uh, unfortunately, uh, our events uh, uh, we weren't up for any anything uh, property specific. Uh, but I was once again blessed to to be uh, nominated for industry person of the year with uh, Mr. Savage and Adam Pliska and uh, Sean McCormick. And you know, it's it's I love that night 
just even if I wasn't up for anything, I would make every attempt to go to it because I joke, I, I compared it to like a yearly high school reunion mm-hmm. without the awkward questions where everybody gets together and just kind of like, hey, how you doing? Uh, you know, we don't have to ask, hey, uh, how you been? Because we all follow each other. But it's just a really good night to get to to get everybody together, show the poker world that we care about what we do. And, you know, it's it's an it's an added, uh, you know, it's it's an add to poker. So it's uh I guess all in all, a great time. I, I get to visit California once a year. Uh, you know, my first three years here, gone to California every year, and um, hope to be back again next year. And for those who missed it uh, in the very beginning of our conversation, that is in fact how my husband knows. To- I said, "Oh, I'm going to be interviewing Tony later today," and he was like, "Oh." The gentleman with the white suit from the poker <laughs> awards. So if you guys don't know, you got to look it up. Tony's got some some flair. Oh. He's got some style. He's looking he's looking fly AF every time he goes to California. <laughs> I still catch a lot of grief for that suit. I I know when Savage burnt his uh, his cranberry suit, they told me I should have thrown that one right in the fire right behind it. No no no, I'm all about that. I, I'm all about like standing out. You gotta you gotta look saucy. You gotta look fun at the awards. Nobody should take themselves too seriously. And in the poker world, I think there's definitely a lot of people take themselves way too seriously. <laughs> um, but finally, I don't want to keep you for too long. Obviously, you're in the midst of running run, running the show over there, the face of the show over there. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this. is something we're going to get into a little bit later in the show. Some of our guests were talking about the, the single big blind ante format. There's a lot of new kind of trends coming out in poker. There's a lot of things people have been trying. What are your thoughts as someone who's, who's seeing this stuff all the time? You know, it's I, I'm my history goes to baseball, and before I got into uh, poker, uh, I, I worked for the Florida Marlins and the Montreal Expos, and then you see Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball is all about speed of play. You know, everybody's attention span right now is you know we're, we're nats. You know, we want we want fast. So I think the uh, it's an evolution of the game. I think it's a great concept. Uh, I played in a couple of myself at like a two fifty price point. Um, I liked it. Uh, I definitely brought some different strategy to your opening ranges when you got short and you're getting ready to post both the you know the big blind and, and the uh, and the ante, which uh, you should be posting the ante first um, <laughs> but later. Uh, but I get it. I, I've heard the arguments on on all over on how this uh, should be conducted. And but all in all, I think it's great for the pace of play. Uh, I, we've I've ran a personal poll, got a small sample. I've seen all the other polls that are out there. But as a majority, I think the players either like the idea of it, if they haven't tried it, or, or like it. I love it. We're all about speeding up that game. Let's keep it fun. Let's keep it fast. Let's make that money. And Tony, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you coming on the show, spending the time. I know you've got a lot going on. And we'll all just be looking forward to what we can expect from your suit next year. It's going to have to be big. Oh, yeah, yeah Adam, Pl- Adam Pl- <laughs> What's that? Oh, you're gonna have to up the game for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Adam Pliska, he gave me the the seal of winning back to back best dressed of the year. So this year was slightly Pliska inspired. So we'll see what we can pull out next year. Here. If uh, once again, if I'm if I'm blessed and lucky enough to to be uh, or the property once again, it's, uh, in the end, it's about the property. And hopefully, uh, people will come out see us in August for the uh, SHRPO five mil uh, with a three million guarantee. We're hoping to get that schedule out soon. So. People love uh, that we'll Sherpo, man. It's like every time I'm at another event, everyone's like, oh, I got to get out. I got to go back to Florida. I'm going to the Sherpo. I like saying yeah. it, too. <laughs> yeah, Sherpo is fun to say. It works out. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, I've heard some people, like, want to try to get rid of it, but there's a lot of people that like it. So I'm like, why get rid of it? it it's catchy, you know? I'm telling you, if you can find an acronym that looks like it's not going to work and then it works, <laughs> like, just run with it, dude. Take it all yeah, the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Tony. I really appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on. Bye. Bye. Hey, Tim.